welcome to my channel, Axe Diabla Shade, with your host, Diabla Shade, LCSW, and I'm back with a new video. Yes, if you are new to my channel, my channel is where mental health meets the millennial with just a sprinkle of my micro locks journey and some travel vlogs here and there, and I'm so happy to have you. Of course, today, as we see, today will be a micro locks video. Listen. Y'all know, your girl is about to be seven months locked, like seven. I am so excited that I have made it seven months in my micro lock journey. And as I am still growing in this journey, still learning about myself, about my hair, my scalp through this journey, I just wanted to share with you five things to consider before getting micro locks. I want to discuss five things that I think you should consider before you get micro locks or sister locks. And the reason I'm giving you these tips, they are actually something that I wish I would have known before I started my journey. I'm still excited about my journey, still loving my journey, but there's there were little hiccups and you know, that I'm just like, mm, wish I would have known beforehand. No matter how much research you do, it just seems like you're always going to learn something new. So, of course, I'm giving myself grace and you should give yourself grace as well. So, let's get into tip number one. You should consider the condition of your hair and your scalp. Now, the reason I say this is that sometimes people or consultants, locticians, some people do not care about your hair and they don't care. Some people will just install these micro locks into your hair and not care about the condition of your hair. You should care about the condition of your hair because if you want your locks to thrive, your hair and your scalp needs to be in good condition. So when I went to my consultant, she let me know that, hey, I'm, I'm seeing something in your scalp is looking like either maybe psoriasis or we might have been looking at dermatitis. She was like, it's not everywhere on your scalp, but it's there. Now, you guys, I have been going to get my hair done, get my hair professionally braided for I don't know how long, and nobody has ever said, this is on your scalp. And it's some areas like I just couldn't see in the back of my head, but no one's ever told me that. And I, 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 I really was just really shocked because I ended up going, as y'all saw, I ended up going to the dermatologist and actually getting diagnosed with seborrheic dermatitis. But how could I have not known that was on my scalp? Like, how could I have not known that because I had an itchy scalp that that actually was what it was? So I really had to jump into scalp savior mode to get my scalp back on track throughout my micro lock journey. So make sure that you know how your scalp is looking because a lot of these beauticians, when you're getting your hair done, especially if you're getting protective styling, they want you to come already washed and blow dry. They really, to me, don't give a damn about your scalp. And I don't know how we got away from having that, um, that type of mentality when it comes to black hair, but it seemed like that's where we are. So you got to be in charge of your own scalp. So also your hair. My hair was uh, in pretty good condition only because I did a big chop um, a couple of years prior, my second big chop, and I was very diligent about taking care of my hair. That's why when I got my micro locks installed, it was installed on um, 13 inches of hair. And I'll link that video so you can go see my installation there when I got these installed. But yes, make sure your hair is in good condition. If you if your hair is damaged by color or just damaged because you don't deep condition it or you haven't been taking care of your hair, if you um, have a scalp condition, if you have alopecia, if you're thinning in your crown, these are some reasons why you should not get micro locks installed until you take care of the problem. Because if your hair is thinning, then when your hair drops and your hair starts to get heavy, it's going, the locks are going to fall out. Um, you also need to know what type of hair strands you have. Now, this necessarily does not um, determine if you should or should not get micro locks, but it does determine how many you're going to get. So I have fine textured hair. So my hair is not as thick as some people. So like with me, I have 275 locks. When I was watching YouTube videos and all my favorite YouTube influencers in the micro lock community, they're getting like four, five, six hundred locks. So when she did mine, I'm like, why is mine only 275? And then she, uh, you know, she communicated to me about my hair texture. And although I have long hair, I had long hair going in, getting locked. 
I necessarily did not have thick strands. And the last thing you want to do is have these really, really small micro locks and your hair eventually, like I said, drops and your hair, your locks start popping off and breaking off because your strands cannot hold the weight. So make sure you know your hair and scalp condition. Tip number two, you need to meet with more than one consultant. I know that people are up here posting their consultants or people are up here posting that they're up here doing micro locks day in and day out. I would suggest a meeting with more than one consultant. And although I praise the consultant I have, she was not the first one I went to. The first one I went to, I <laughs> Someone recommended her and I'm still like, I don't, baby girl was late to the appointment. She just seemed like she just wasn't very knowledgeable. She couldn't really, she was kind of going around in circles about the questions that I was asking and I didn't feel safe with her doing my hair. First of all, you was already late, strike three, four, and five. Like after that, I just, I'm a stickler about time. I, mm, 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 mm. I like professionalism. So when I went to my loctician, who y'all have seen on my channel, um, she was just very knowledgeable and she was early. She was there before I was, uh, she was knowledgeable about hair, about scalp. Um, she gave me her background, how long she's been doing micro locks. You know, it was just, I felt safe. I felt like she loved black hair and she cared about it. She cared about my scalp health because hello, she didn't have to tell me what was going on in my scalp. She could have been like everybody else. So I really appreciated her. So make sure that you are getting to know your consultant and that you feel safe. Just because you might want micro locks does not mean you should jump in anybody's chair because you, I know we can cut these out or comb these out, but for the most part, this is a permanent hairstyle. You want the installation to be done correctly. You want a solid foundation for your journey. And if you don't have it, you're going to be like, why my hair is falling out or why my locks falling out or why? Da, da, da. Get you a, an amazing consultant. Get you an amazing loctician if you're not doing it yourself. If you're doing it yourself, make sure you do a lot of research and you know what you're doing because again, you want to set the you want to set a really good foundation. Tip number 3. You need to cut and color your hair before you get your locks installed. Now, you don't have to do this, but I would suggest you doing this before you consider getting micro locks. And the reason I say that, or before you even get them installed, because what I have found is for me personally, I wanted color, but I just did not have enough time to go get my hair color prior to getting them installed. Now that I have them installed, I have to wait until my locks mature before I can add color to it. So I just feel like, Mm, I should have just went ahead and bought the bullet and went and got it colored beforehand. Secondly, when I say get your hair cut, your hair is going to lay how your hair is cut. So if you have botched up ends, if you have just a botched up cut, that's how your locks are going to fall and you're going to be stuck with it for a while. And so again, I'm waiting until my hair matures to do anything to it. Y'all, if y'all seen my last video, I think I discussed it. I do not like my current, how my hair is cut right now. Because I did not get my hair cut before getting them installed. I should have, I wanted to keep my lips so bad, but I should have still got it shaped in a shape that I would want my micro locks to fall. And I know some people are like, oh, I love your hair, it's so beautiful. I never said it wasn't beautiful. I never said I didn't love my hair, but I would have wanted a, 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 a better cut. That's it. And just me personally, I would have. So if you know that you want your hair to look a little more even or you want it to flow some way, a certain way when your locks do start, you know, when your hair starts getting thicker, then I would suggest possibly going ahead and getting your hair cut and colored before you get installed. Tip number four of what you should consider before you get micro locks or sister locks. The cost of establishment and the cost of maintenance. Again, I'm operating out of the mindset of anyone that is going to a loctician. If you're not going to a loctician, then of course this does not apply to you. But I wanted a professional to do my hair because I want it done right. And I know that is not my skills in life is... <laughs> 
<laughs> to do hair or I don't feel like learning how to do it. So you need to be prepared for the cost of establishment. Now, some people ask me, why did I go, why did I get micro locks instead of sister locks? And I, you know, one of my main reasons was the price point. I feel like for the look to look so similar, there was such a, a big discrepancy in prices. And I was like, mm, 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 mm. that's not going to work for me. So what I decided to do, that's why I ended up getting micro locks. But it still was costly depending on the length of your hair. So I went in with 13 inches of hair and I also did the my establishment was two strand twist because I chose two strand twist which was cheaper than starting off just with interlocking I interlock now for maintenance but because I didn't start off with interlocking it was cheaper and but because my hair was long it was a little lengthy so I paid a little over eight hundred dollars to get my micro locks established which to me was not bad considering some people was like fifteen hundred dollars sixteen hundred dollars for my hair I was like <laughs> Nah, I'm good. And I love my hair. So if you specifically want sister locks because it's a trademark, you're going to be spending the big bucks. So you need to already know it's going to cost to get them established. And some people are like, oh, that ain't nothing but a refund check or that ain't nothing. I got to save up a couple of my checks. I can go ahead and get it. Maintenance. You need to be ready for maintenance. You need, first of all, because you have to stay on schedule for maintenance. And if you don't, you're going to end up, your locks going to marry, your locks going to break off. Because your hair is thick here and then your roots is thin and it's going to start snapping off. So you want to stay on your maintenance schedule. I go every six weeks. How much I'm paying every six weeks? Because usually she's washing my hair. So, of course, she charges me to wash my hair as well. Um, I'm paying about $200 and some dollars every six weeks to get my, every six weeks to get my locks um, retied. Yes. And I do the interlock method. If you cannot afford that or more, depending on where you are, I'm getting mine done in Memphis. I'm sure if you're in Atlanta, if you're in Los Angeles, if you're in New York, the price is probably a little way higher than that. Be mindful, <laughs> unless you're going to start, unless you're going to learn how to self-retire, you're going to be paying money every four to six weeks to get your hair retired. So you need to be cognizant of that going in that this still, although it is low maintenance, it is not no maintenance. And you going to be paying for it. So you don't, you want to make sure, like I said earlier, you stick to a schedule. And that's why I'm saying be prepared to not only just pay for an expensive establishment, you're going to be paying for maintenance and it's going to be expensive because their time is expensive. So like with my uh, person that I go to, my loctician, she charges by three hour intervals. So it's one set price for three hours. And if all your hair can fit in that three hours or she's able to interlock in that three hours, then that's great. If not, and say she doesn't have another client after you, then you'll just start getting charged additionally by the hour. So I make sure, and that's again why you stay on schedule because the longer you are off schedule, the more new growth you have, which will take longer to retie your hair, which will cost more money. So stay on schedule <laughs> so you don't have to spend more money. But yes, the establishment is expensive and the maintenance is expensive. So make sure that you are mindful of that. Last but not least, I will say that a thing that you should consider before you get micro locks or sister locks is that your hair will not look like your favorite YouTuber's hair. That was a harsh realization for me because like I said earlier, I have fine textured hair, which means I don't have a lot of locks because my hair will break off once my hair thickens and drops and matures it will break off because my strands are not that thick. Meanwhile, I'm up here watching uh, my favorites, Takira Ann, uh, Kalila, but she also has fine hair. Um, who else was I watching with their micro locks? Uh, Wes Indy Ray, but I don't even, she has traditional locks. But anyway, I was watching a lot of micro locks videos as well of different people and their hair was just so beautiful. And I'm like, these folks got so many locks. And now that I got my hair, even now that my hair is starting to mature, 
my hair still does not look like Tykira Ann. It still does not look like Kalila. Like, it doesn't look like anybody. It looks like my hair. So, I'll not, and I, I had to fall in love with my hair looking like my hair and being okay that my hair will probably never look like their hair. And that is okay. So, when you're getting inspiration looking at my videos, looking at other YouTuber videos, understand that your hair probably not going to look like this when you get your locks. Like, it's not. But it does not mean your hair is not going to be beautiful and unique and just giving what it's supposed to give. Just don't get your hopes up or don't get disappointed if you go and get your locks established and you be like, this ain't, this ain't looking like what, she, what my inspiration was looking like. It's okay, okay? All right, you guys, that is my video for today. I hope that it was so helpful. Um, if you're new to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe. Like the video, comment below about your micro lock journey. What are some things you wish you would have considered before you got them established? Go ahead and subscribe for more micro locks videos and more mental health videos and some travel vlogs here and there. And follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, at Diabla Shade. And I look forward to seeing you all in my next video. Bye!